is mm. how our schools fail black children. I thought you had a pen on your desk. Let me start off this letter with blessings and love. Me know it's hard in the penitentiary, but stay tough. I have a right to kite shit. It's almost been a year, you know the road. Rocky with the ups and downs of my career. Still no one me fear. And me never turning farm, I'm here. One in a sig, watching a video from Chapa. And me know it seems easy, but outside it's harder. It's a lovely thing, boy. You don't have no baby mother, brother. You are a spokesman for Chop. Can you tell our play vibe listeners what Chop is, please? Chop is um, a community hip hop outreach program. What we do is we go um, to certain schools and we go to the colleges and um, we uh, when when people leave high school, yep. A lot of times, so a lot of kids that leave high school don't have any guys. They don't know what they're going to get into next. Uh huh. So it's really just to encourage them to continue the education. That after high school you don't have to stop. Now, I also feel that I'm all for fulfilling your dream. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Realistic in the world that we live in, the way the system is set up, if you have a chance of going to college and continuing your education, yeah. then I'm all for that. And and that's what I do. I, I teach it and I put these kids on that, you know, it's cool to continue your education and there's nothing wrong with that and definitely fulfill your dreams and so if, you, if it's in the arts and entertainment world but you can actually get more by having that paper with you if you if you have the funds and like mm. i said you have the access to go to college go for it mm. go for it and that's what the chat program is all about i'm also representing for the stand project uh-huh stand project is about and if you go on my page um at myspace.com yeah. slash Dillinger, D-I-L-I-N-J-A-H, you'll see in my top friends the STAMP project. And that whole thing is about just making the world more aware of what's going on mm-hmm. that, uh, in Haiti and you know, in a lot of these countries and everything else. So. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's vital to do that kind of work, not only to give back to the community, but to help them, young people, grow. I work with a lot of children that are disaffected. They've been with the in, inside of the care institution, um, alcoholism, drug abuse, and um, physical abuse, physical violence. Or sometimes they might have learning difficulties, and I teach them um, drama to help empower them. So I am always interested to hear if artists are doing positive things within the community because it comes back to you, you know. I want to grow up and I want to be like Dylan. Do you see what I'm saying? It comes back to you and I think that's positive. Okay, so um, I was really intrigued reading through um, your your information, bio, that kind of thing. And um, it, it basically, you are now moving into the remit of acting, which fascinates me. So tell me, um, what are people offering you scripts? What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I've been offered a few scripts, but I ain't take none yet. Oh, for <laughs> I ain't take none yet because it gotta be the right role. It gotta be the right thing. Like you know what I'm saying. That, I mean, acting, acting is great because we all have emotions, and you know how to tap into certain emotions and and to get into the soul of somebody else. That's all that is. There's nothing wrong with that. We do it all the time, even in music, because like for example, like earlier today when I went to the studio. Mm. The um the moon and the song was was a hardcore gangster thing. Now my mood today when I woke up I was like you know just drinking tea and feeling real humble and chilling. Yes, yes. Then, but because I've been to the garrison, I've been to the streets, and I've done you know what I'm saying a lot of stuff in the streets. You know what I'm saying in my past. Yes. Just had to take a break and go in that zone. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And which is which is a far to reach for me. So what, are you looking for a doctor role, a scientist role, an educator role? What kind of roles would you, what would be your ideal sort of character to play? A starship, spaceship man on Trek? What what, what would you want to do? If I had, as far as acting? Say again? If I had to, if, if I, you had as the far option. as acting, if I had to get into a role? You know, if, you had, if, if you had the option to say, yeah, this is the kind of role that I want, what kind of role would it be? So, if, for example, um, me as an actress, I would want to play um, a teacher that maybe ment- mentors troublesome children in school. I would, I would say something, a, a character, not, not, not a fictionist character. I would take a character that, that somebody did, did something in life. Kind of like how, um, there's a bad other, like, 
like you know what I'm saying, whether it's like a Frank Lucas, like a lot of those are Denzel do, like I, I yeah. used to like Malcolm X. Yeah. Just Frank Lucas with American Gangster. Mm. Um people do like Will that did um Muhammad Ali. Mm. What is somebody that stands out in history? Jamie Foxx and that, that did, um, um, Ray Charles. Like just Somebody, exactly, like, like how um, Jamie Foxx did that. I would pick one of those kind of roles mm. that stands out, that, that did something, that touched the people. Mm. So it's bad or good. If they made a mark in history, then I would want to play them. That's so big. black man that, that has done something. That's big. You're very positive, and I'm warming to you, not just because you're a fellow Grenadian, but I'm warming to you because you're chatting sense. And I like brothers yeah. that... I'm warming to you because you're chatting sense, and I like brothers that chat sense. Yeah, of course, of course, I'm a chance. Definitely. Okay, so let's move on to making the band, because when I saw this program and I saw you in it, I did. Out of all of them, I thought you was the talented one, and I think P Diddy was a bit hard on you. I really do, because everyone's got their struggles. Everyone goes through stuff. So can you tell me, being in that limelight where you've got millions upon millions of people knowing who you are, being in your business, probably saying stuff in the newspaper about you, this, that, and this, that, what kind of lessons have you gained or learned from that? Well, I would say, I would say, first of all, that I would say to the people, number one, yeah, you cannot believe everything that you see on TV because, especially if it's reality TV, reality TV <laughs> is fifty percent real and fifty percent edited. Uh huh. With, with, yeah, so with all the editing that they did and how they put together the show, it is what it is. It's entertainment. It was entertaining for the people. They liked it. I'm saying, you know, they like the badass dialogue, the rebels, the mm-hmm. outcasts or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, behind the scenes, I was going through a lot of turmoil, a lot of stress, a lot of tribulations. I went through court cases. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I'm in front of the church a lot of times. And mm-hmm. at the same time, I got to try and get along with five other people with different personalities that I don't know from anywhere. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. got 40,000 40, people to be on this show. And wow. after that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it, it, I had my good times, I had my bad times. Mm. It was all worth it. And I want to thank P. Diddy. I'll thank MTV for the yeah. rest of my life for that exposure. Yeah. Good, but, because it opened up the door to Reborn and like I said like even though I knew that you was going through the stuff and caught and this and I did think that you was a little bit bullied by P. Diddy. Would you think that, that you know is that fair to say? Okay, so. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Straight up. No boy can bully me. <laughs> Go on. Go on, baby love. Go on. And I'll, and I'll explain. Man, right? man, please do. Bullied, if I was bullied and I was picked on and I was, you know what I'm saying, disrespected, I was, I was disrespected through editing. Mm-hmm. Through editing. Mm. Not real life. Because nobody, including P. Diddy himself, can disrespect me in my face. Mm-hmm. You understand? So if you did see any moment where old Darren um, bowed out or was on some humble vibes or just took it, that was only because that was how the editing and how they wanted the show to go. Okay, I got you. That, that, that's TV, that's media, that's mainstream. Okay, so... TV. It's supposed to be like that. Like, you're supposed to, you know what I'm saying, put things together and make him the bad guy. This person's supposed to be the goody two-shoes. This mm. person's supposed to be the... And they put together your personality, a piece. Yes. Your personality. Yes. And they dwell on that piece of the personality. Is it ever? No. But you know what? They open the door for millions of people to know who... It's a piece of guy like Billy And if they know a piece of me, yes. that's good. Because now, when we born, when we born, drop then you know a little bit more when the prefix drop you know a little bit more now when that album come out this is my autobiography this is the whole me this is my heart soul the whole thing you can't uh-huh there's, there's no fronting no more this is the whole thing you know what i'm saying so now you gotta respect it right? there's no way that you can't that, that people are gonna listen to the album and not respect it i guarantee yes. i don't care if you're a hater uh-huh. you can hate me you can yes. hate every i could have slapped your father <laughs> And, and you listen to my album, you're still going to give me my respect. Because you have talent in you. You have talent in you. And I mean, actually, you know, it's platinum selling, wasn't it? So, you know, that is really going to boost one's confidence and oneself. And um, like I said, I just thought that you was the most talented one 
out of the crew i just thought how did he pick that and why did he pick them and this and that because i'm very critical and this is why when i heard your music i was like the letter the letter i had that on repeat Dylan, you get me? I had that on repeat. I was like, jeez, need to send this man some of my tunes and songs. You get me? Because this man's doing some big things and he sounds like himself. And I think that's the main thing and that's a beautiful thing. So um, when when do you think you're going to visit your fans in London, my dear? When? Yeah, when are you going to come to London and see us? I, I come soon. I come soon. You come soon? Yeah. I love, I love everything. I mean, I haven't been there, but I love my London people. And honestly, like, I've met so many people from London, so many people from England as a whole that came down that, that I meet when I'm in Grenada or when I'm here in the States. And like I said, I have so much family. I have a lot of family. I have more family in England than I have in the States. Okay. Well...